and I think we're at about 4,500 hours on, on Wild Trail, which is a big, it's a big, big project. Absolute slog, I'm tired now. That was a client and we were charging a hundred pounds an hour like we, we do on a number of clients. That would be a 450,000 pound project. Sinks has lent me a lot of money. It gave me 650,000. Which is massive. I've made 70,000. Oh, yeah. It's not looking too good. Mills has been, we're gonna make loads of money and then when it comes out, he would say, oh, it's a very niche app, it's a very niche app. I kind of told him every time this is the one of Fully knowing that they never were. This one, well, Trail, it really is that one. <laughs> no, no, I can't say. Mills. Patience is starting to fray a little bit. They're not paying for themselves, never mind make, making profit. Crikey, though, if it does fail, I'll fing hell. I've been extremely good, or we, should I say, at producing products that make a huge splash in terms of PR and marketing. And they bring so much exposure to the studio uh, that we, as a byproduct of that, we make a shitload of money from clients who are willing to pay us to make fantastic products. <laughs> Those 4,000 hours on Wild Trail are actually not even including Mills' hours, which I suspect are, are, qu are quite a few. <laughs> so at the beginning of this year, we decided that it was time to actually make a good product. Um, I'd have kind of managed to release about 16 products uh, from the Studio of Dreams, and it's fair to say there was a lot of Succalia, uh, Succalia being uh, success for failure, um, and that's funny. And I laughed an awful lot. But this year we decided to invest uh, half a million or just over half a million to actually allow a team of dedicated um, developers, designers to focus on a few key products. Cordon off a, a, a group of resources that no, no, no one else could take for client work and dedicate that to our own IP. Sinks and the rest of the company are kind enough to lend CWA Content with Attitude, our group of uh, 10, um, 650,000 pounds, which allowed us to concentrate purely on our own products that we wanted to release. Whereas before last year on a lot of the other projects, we were kind of nipping in and out and kind of pinching people. And it's not the most efficient way of working, so it was quite hard for, for, for CWA to get projects done. The idea being that, you know, we would produce products that there was at least a small chance that they would do well financially, but that wasn't the motivator. The first, the first couple were great apps and I'm massively proud of them, but you know, they're, they're, not, they're not paying for themselves, never mind make, making profit. Not many companies are willing to invest the sort of money we're willing to invest into, into our own IP development and Nursery Rhymes came out at the beginning of this year and it had so critical acclaim around the world, Apple all over it. The world literally turned to our students and said, you've produced a fantastic product. But sadly, it didn't make any money. Then recently we released Papercut and that got national exposure. It's an enhanced reading platform and that made even less money. So now we've got three months to kind of recoup about 550,000 pounds. No problem. We're really hoping this project does bring, bring you know, sort of do well and, and, and bring some money back. So yeah, no pressure there. Oh, shy. We're a, we're a relatively expensive studio. It costs a lot to run this studio. So if this was four people in their bedroom, they could probably make this app for 50, 50 grand, of course. But for us, it just costs an awful lot more. And as we've moved into lovely, big, fancy studios and employing more senior people that are more expensive, that our, our, our cost base is just going up and up. I mean, I, it's good. It's probably the natural progression of, of, in, of any company as they grow. But it does mean it costs us more to do own IP work. But yeah, CWA is like the reason I exist. I wouldn't, I can't work for other people. I can only work for myself. And I'm proud that with Whale Trail, we put a team together that are just so on it. Whale Trail is the sort of game that I've always wanted to make. I've 
um, played games ever since I was really small and um, worked in games for a few years now and um, this is the one that you know I've definitely had the most fun making. We've been working on the design of the game. None of the designs is not even worth thinking about until the mechanics done so that was all developed first. And put together this idea for a game that we could get out quickly in, in a few months uh, and that we could kind of do with the resources at hand, so nothing too sprawling or massive, yeah, yeah. but something that we could kind of push up to a jewel of perfection in a standard ASTU style. For a lot of time we spent prototyping, um, and with, with different characters, so I mean at one point it was, it was this bird, wasn't it? The first prototype of Whale Trail had you flying a bird, and it was a much jerkier motion, so you would kind of you would go in an arc and then just like jerk right, yeah, straight yeah, up yeah, again. Sure like the flap of wings. But then we realised there were loads of those already out, so we kind of brainstormed and chatted quite a lot about what would be, you know, different and stand out from the crowd and kind of be funny as well. Yeah, I think that was it. It was just, it was kind of fun if we, if we chose to just, I think it was just an off-the-cuff remark, you know, it was like, what flies and, well, a whale doesn't fly, so that was kind of funny. It was quite a key moment when we decided it was a whale because it, well, it, that freed us up completely from any kind of reality and it became a real kind of surreal uh, design experience from then on didn't it you know like um, yeah anything goes really yeah because it doesn't essentially doesn't make any sense there's, there's a flying whale so yeah anything and goes if you go too complicated people lose interest after one sentence so it's kind of rainbow themed isn't it so all the zones the color seven colors of the rainbow on the seven you don't get more basic than that do you no not really really good fun actually and it's shamingly simple in terms of the mechanic and what you're actually trying to do and it reminds me a lot of the sort of games I used to play when I was little which were like 2D um, games you know sort of going left and right in a fun magical world like a lot of, of things that appear simple on the surface a lot of work has stuff going gone on into game yeah. to be that simple yeah it's simple and, and fun but um, you know it's got lots of little amazing touches as well um, my favourite parts of the game are like things like you you sort of keep noticing things all the time when you're playing and every time you play you see something different. Worked out that lovable characters tend to have kind of big baby shaped heads. Yeah, yeah. And um you know, a whale can have a huge body but smaller features like tail and fins and stuff, so it can kind of have that baby looking look yeah, to it. it make the eye huge and it's pretty much all head really with just the distinguishing features of the yeah. of the body. But that did cause some problems because with it being small on the screen you couldn't you couldn't read the outline very well. So, well, you could. Well, what it meant was that some some designs just didn't work, did they? When they were small, they looked really wrong. Yeah, because it's also because it's flying, and a, and a whale obviously doesn't fly. It had to kind of look aerodynamic because it's going for the air and not sort of bending as you swoop. So we had to sort of play with that quite a bit, and we went through quite a few different versions. We did a a beat up where we released the game to 100 to 150 um, sort of users, spreading from you know absolute beginner players to experienced people and. Uh, people that work in the industry to ask them what they think. One of the most important things about the beta testing is uh, for the balancing of the game, so the difficulty levels, we don't want it too easy so people get bored, people that want to maybe play at the high level, but then we also need enough challenge to keep those that are very good playing and I think that's what was really good about the um, beta test is that it seems that we, we struck a fairly decent balance between the two from the feedback we got back. Yeah, I'm massively proud of what the team's achieved in a short space of time and I think for you know an iPhone casual game it's it's you know got epic quality to it. Touch my will I'm letting that wonderful team gel. It's the perfect mix, it's pure cream. Um, what I'm doing is getting out there with Steve and building buzz, building uh, towards the big day, building towards the release. You know, what we've learned over these years is that you might have a great product, but if you don't know how to tell people about that product, there's no chance it's gonna do well. I spent six or seven months now tirelessly, almost on the road, just making sure we get to know the right people, get to know uh, the right journalists, showing people, um, doing user testing, doing huge user testing with groups outside the studio. Um, we started beta testing to over 300 people around the world who not only played the game and feed back to us but also worked with us to hype this game more and more and that hype really works because then journalists come to us, they're hearing about World Trail. If we made a load of money from these products that we release, it's a game changer for our studio. We're going to continually invest, no problem, um, presuming Sinks and his gang continue to make money. 
I'd love to be in a point where we're able to turn down clients that we don't want to work with and just work on the cream, the cream of the clients and the projects. So is uh, and and that naturally helps fund while it needs it the CWA team that hopefully will maybe fund us one day. <laughs> I can't afford to lose on this one. If I fail on this one, it's game over because um, I'm out of this game. I've got no energy left, and I'm the one for God's sake, you know. W O N K A, Wonka. There's nothing we've done wrong in this one. I just want to cry. I love you. Willow's worth it too. My whale.